Please note that this video is for educational purposes only. Please don't comment any crimes. I was doing this on Hack the Box, which is an isolated environment. Basically, what I want to do is just I want to show you a simple level. Now, this level is called Board Light HTB. And this level is simple. It's a Linux machine. It is very basically, I think, if you're a beginner, I think this machine's pretty good when it, when it comes to actually learning the skills to hack, right? Especially for CTFs, this machine's absolutely brilliant. Okay, now I'm not going to show you any flags, unfortunately, because I don't think HTB would like me to show the flags as this machine is still active. It doesn't have, it's not retired. So I'm not going to show you any flags. I'm just going to show you a simple way to get to the system. I'm not going to show you privilege escalation either to get the root flags. I'm just going to show you a simple reverse shell exploit. Right. And a little, basically some low um, sort of mindset as a hacker, right? Okay. So uh, the first thing you should always do, obviously, is the first is recon right so sudo and map svsc and let me just get the ip address so it's 10 okay there we go right so the first thing is recon so we're just gonna run a simple nmap scan so i can get the ports and some critical information about the system okay so we have port 22 now port 22 is always open so we're just gonna ignore this and what we get is basically port 80 which is a website right so if I open the browser and I just type in HTTP, HTTP 10.129.5788. Now notice that I don't need to specify any protocol or any port. Well, I do specify the protocol, sorry, but I'm not specifying any, anything else. I'm not specifying a port. This is because port 80 is HTTP, so we don't need to specify any other port. But if the website was one port, maybe 10,000, then you should specify the port to 10,000, right? Okay, so as you can see, basically we run the website and if you open the browser, right, what you should, the first thing you should do is look for some functionality. Now, there's not a lot of functionality because this is a CTF, it's easy, so there's not a lot of sort of to get lost here, right? So we have home, uh, about, what do we do? Contact us, login page, which doesn't work, and a search bar, which doesn't work either, right? So if you come to contact us, one thing that caught my eye here is the, the contact page. Now it actually works if I do one, one, two, three, and I do, for example, one, two, three at gmail.com and I do some simple message. It sends a message, but the thing is, I'm not sending a message for fun. What I'm trying to see is what actually happens when I send a message. So I'm going to do one, two, three. I'm going to send the request again. I'm just going to send some random information I can think of. And what we're going to come to is Burp Suite. Now Burp Suite, basically what I'm looking for is some forms, contact forms can have XML, right? So they can, it could be an XML form. In this case, it's not an XML form, so I can't really perform an XML injection attack or XXE, right? So we to, we're going to have to move on to something else. Right, okay, but there's nothing here. There's no functionality. You can log in, there's nothing here. What we could do is run a subdomain enumeration. So we could look for maybe some login pages, some uh, some maybe some files, maybe some credentials, maybe anything, right? But the thing is, we could, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a subdomain enumeration, right? So what we're going to do is, I don't think I have it. Yeah, I'm going to have to type in again. Okay, so we're going to use for, for subdomain enumeration. But before we do this, we need to specify a... We need to specify a etc hosts basically entry. So if you do sudo sudo nano etc hosts, and in my case, as you can see, I already have them configured because I'm re-recording this. No cancel, right? So if you basically come here, right, and you do sudo nano etc hosts, and you basically take the IP address with the with the basically domain or the host. So in my case is Bordeaux HTB. You can specify whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Bordeaux HTB, right? And uh, a subdomain, but I'm going to show you how to get a subdomain as well, right? So we're going to cancel this for a second. I'm going to run fuff hyphen, uh, sorry, hyphen W user share word list, sec list, discovery, DNS. And we're going to run it subdomain top 1 million. And we're going to run it. There we go. Right, that's what I'm looking for. Now, what we need to specify is the, also the IP address. So I'm going to, sorry, the actual address. I'm going to specify board.htb, right? And what we're going to do is specify the header. So I'm going to specify host um, fuzz. Now, the reason I'm putting fuzz is because that ha that's how fuzz works. If you put fuzz anywhere, it's going to fuzz, right? So if you were to put fuzz here after htb, 
it would fuzz, right? So I'm going to do fuzz.board.htb and I'm just going to close it and basically I'm going to let this run. Now I want to show you one thing. As you can see, we're getting basically, we're getting a lot of entries, but these are false positives, right? So what we need to look is we need to look for the difference, right? So if I type in hyphen H, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a filter. So either matcher or filter. In this case, we're going to use a filter and we're going to look for something that's basically the same, right? In this case, we could use the words, right? So we're going to use the words to specify. We could also use something else. For example, we could use the size. So I'm actually, maybe let's actually use the size for, for a change, right? So let me just look for the size. There we go. Filter HTTP response size. So I'm going to use hyphen S, hyphen S, and we're going to specify the 15,000. Okay, so five, five, there we go. Right, so we're going to specify this. And as you can see, I have found a subdomain, right? So just a quick question, if you ask how this works, I'm going to uh, break this now again, right? So what I've done is I've basically run a simple request. And as you can see, we get a lot of false positives. So what we need to do is just filter all of these out, filter all of these out, right? I don't recommend filtering the status to 100, right? Just one thing I want to touch on, do not filter out status to 100. Status to status 200 is okay, which, which is good for us. We should not filter out status to 100. What you need to do is filter out something else, right? Because status to 100 means okay which means if you want to filter out something that we want, then we're sort of, we're not doing ourselves a favor. We're filtering out something that we need, right? So filter out, for example, 404, which means not found or 403 forbidden. We can also bypass forbidden, which just means 403 forbidden, but that's for later on. That's not really for this video, right? So if, you, if you're filtering stuff out, just be aware what you're actually filtering out so you don't actually like, you know, waste your time as well. In this case, what we can do is we can either filter the, the size, the words, or the lines. But in this case, either the size or the words is perfect, right? So, sp so it's up to you which one you want to use. In this case, I decided to filter out the size, right? But you can also filter the words. And this obviously goes for anything, right? Not just for this situation. This goes for 90% of the requests that you send with fuff. Right, so as you can see, we have found a subdomain. So we have found the subdomain and the next thing we need to do is we need to specify the subdomain and the etc hosts. So if you do sudo nano etc host, put the IP address. So in my case it's 10 and and we specify the crm.board.htb, save it. And if you come to your browser and you just basically change to crm.board.htb, what this will do, this will give you basically the login page. Now, now what we could do in this situation is we could brute force or what we could do is we have our sh really, really short list that we could just manually try to guess the default credentials. Default credentials and CTFs are very, very common. So I do recommend just checking it before you waste your time running a brute force attack or even getting the brute force attack or dictionary attack wrong. Just try to do it yourself. Just try to try some default credentials or try to look up also very, very important is you should also try to look for default credentials. So for example, if I'm trying to get to Dolly Bar, right? So if I put Dolly Bar default credentials, right? So as you can see, right? Login as admin and password is the same than the ones I'm, right? So I guess, the, but it says admin, like login as admin. So let's try admin admin, right? What you could also do is you could try to look for some normal credentials. For example, just type in default credentials or most common credentials, and then just try to access with these. Okay, so just one thing I want to show you is the next step for you is you should look for functionality in this website, right? Or whenever you get another website, especially in CTFs, right? So now, as you can see, we have home tools, websites, right? So just some random stuff, right? But if you come to tools and you can search stuff, what you could do here is you could try to exploit XSS, right? But in this case, there's no XSS, it's not vulnerable. Now, we are actually very, very limited to what we can do. Right, but one thing I've basically want to show you is if you come to your account and it says card, what we get is if you look for the URL, which is also important, you should always look for the URLs, we get a user ID. Now we use our ID too, right? Which is a bit weird because if you're, as a, we're admin and we're as a user ID too, there is one user before us. Now, if you were to access, for example, if I was to put an ID one, which we can't access, unfortunately, but you could play, maybe play with cookies, maybe you could, um, inject a cookie that could give us access to ID one or just a simple idor by just simple changing the URL, 
it could give us some information, right? So something to be aware of. Now, unfortunately, this is not vulnerable, but if this was unvulnerable to IDOR, we could possibly make, we could send a report with IDOR, which is a bounty, or we could maybe get some credentials or some information that we're not supposed to see, or customer data, which is very good for bug bounty, right? So unfortunately, we, there's no IDOR here, but something to be aware of. If you see ID, you could try to exploit it. Right, in this case, it's not exploitable. Right, okay, but we have now, basically we have valid credentials that allow us to log in. What can we do with this? What we can do is, if you were to go to Google, right, Google, never matter, it doesn't matter, right, we have this exploit. So what we could do is we could exploit using these valid credentials. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to basically look at the exploit. If you look at the exploit, it basically tells you how to use this, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to go, I've already copied this and I've already got it on my, I think it's on my, on my file somewhere. Also, I'm going to start a listener up because we need to use the listener to receive a reverse shell, right? So I'm going to type in ls and as you can see, there's exploit.py. Now, the fastest way to start this is just type python3 exploit.py and before you paste it, send it, what we need to do is we need to give it some information. So... Um, if you come here to usage, also GitHub is also very, very important or whatever you got this from, it is important that you check what how to use this, right? If you type in hyphen H, it usually tells you how to run, as you can see, uh, Python 3 exploit API target hostname, username, password, L host, L port, right? So I'm going to show you how to run a simple script. So I'm just going to use it in. Okay. So to run this, all we need to do is type in Python 3 exploit .py or your file name, whatever you've named it, and we need to put target hostname. So for me, it's HTTP CRM board .htb. Now remember how we put in the IP address with the hostname, it will resolve itself. So we can just put CRM board .htb because of our ETC hosts entry, right? Um, username, so admin, it could be something, in my, in my case, it's 10, 10, 14, 108, and L port, which is 444. Now I'm gonna send this, and what's gonna happen is, as you can see, it worked, right? So as you can see, try and editing page show and call reverse show. Press Ctrl C after successful connection. So in this case, if I check my, there we go, right? So as you can see, connect uh, successful. I'm just gonna press Ctrl C and send a command. So in my case, who am I? So we know we're WW data because we're running this uh, reverse show because it's running on a website, right? So we got, uh, usually it's WW data. LS. EWD, okay, so we are here. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is we can do whatever we want, right? So we can look for, for example, cat etc password, for example. And as you can see, we have found some users. So, right, so that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. Maybe you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Also, if you'd like to learn some hacking skills, maybe you want to learn hacking from ground up, please check out my other course, which will be in the description below. And peace.